Well, hello, welcome back to the most difficult chapter in this two-course series. Uh, today, right now, we're going to talk about uh, integrated rate laws, or I mean not today, but this section. Uh, so, uh, integrated rate laws, this is again calculus, and if you don't understand calculus, that's okay, uh, but I'm going to show you a calculus proof. So, uh, but again, if you don't understand calculus, don't worry about this, but I'm also, sh I'm also trying to lead you up to more advanced classes, and you'll see many times, you'll see pr things proven mathematically. So the first order, so we mentioned about reaction orders in the previous video. First order rate is equal to a rate constant times whatever reactant to the first power. And this equals to, and this is a reactant, so uh, we're losing the rate of disappearance of A over time is the, is the change in the concentration A. It's going to be in the negative direction over change in time. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to, instead of change, I'm going to give it the uh, infinites, infinitesimal delta, the d, d concentration of A, so the rate constant, or the rate constant times concentration A is equal to minus d o, dA over dt instead of the, the macroscopic, I'm going microscopic. So we're going to rearrange, put K on the left side and the negative side and, and have a uh, change in concentration of A over A. Uh, now I'm going to integrate that from zero to some time for dt and I'm going to integrate from some initial concentration to a future concentration. Sometimes this is A0, sometimes we call it A0, sometimes we call it A0. So the not, that's kind of, it's a British term, so like all for not, that's all for nothing. No, zero is sometimes called not. So A0 to AT, dA over dT. Uh, if you know your calculus, uh, just the differential of a function, that equals the, the, that variable. So dt integral from integral of dt is t. And the limits of 0 to t. Uh, the, um, the integral of uh, dx over x, that's natural log of x. So natural log of a from a0 to some time t. So uh, now we apply the limits. Minus kt is natural log of a at some time t minus natural log of initial the initial concentration and we can rearrange this where minus kt plus the natural log of initial concentration equals natural log of at or and then flip it around natural log of some concentration of a species of concentration a at some time t is minus kt plus natural log of a0 and that's just for the, we like to have things on a line. Y equals mx plus b, m being the slope, uh, b being the y-intercept. So now we could put that on a piece of graph paper. So uh, this is this is also predates computers. Okay, so uh, we can nowadays, of course, we can just throw it into our calculators or our computers and do programming. But back when we uh, didn't have those fancy tools, uh, we 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 graph things. We still graph things quite a bit. So what you can do, if you want, you can, uh, if you uh, map out the rate, uh, if you have a, a concentration time data, uh, you can take the natural log of the concentration versus time, and if it's a straight line, it's first order. And so here are these data uh, in this example, natural log of the concentration uh, versus time, uh, and uh, notice it's a straight line and then the slope is equal to minus the K so that's is an easy way to get the rate constant isn't this easier than than doing uh, the long drawn-out method we learned last class and it gets even easier this way isn't calculus awesome uh, you'll be given all these equations so these are the equations you'll be given you don't have to prove them you just have to know how to use them Decomposition of SO2Cl2 is first order and has a rate constant of 2.9 times 10 to the minus fourth inverse seconds. If the reaction is carried out the same temperature uh, and the initial concentration is 0.225 molar, what will the concentration of uh, SO2Cl2 be after 8.65 seconds? So uh, Let's look at this. We have this equation, the first order integrated rate law. So minus K minus 2.9 times 10 to the minus 4, 1 over seconds. And it's after 
8.65 seconds plus natural log of 0.0225 molar. So with the units, notice that the seconds go away. And then we just plug this in our calculator. So let me plug this in the calculator. OK, so you plug that in the calculator, and you get that equals uh, it's a natural log. So a natural log of A, a concentration T is that. Uh, how do you get rid of the natural log? You take E to both sides. So E to the natural log A of T. This is equal to uh, A of T by logarithm rules equals E to the minus 4.045. This equals 0 0.0175 molar. And this is our answer. And uh, you can see how I solved it on the calculator in that uh, portion of the right. Um, notice a couple things. I'm using this E button, using an E button to, to look at that. Uh, and then I'm using the answer button so I don't have to keep on typing in the, the, the variables. So an easy way to do it. So look at this question here. We have cyclopropane going to uh, propene. So uh, and the, the reaction is first order rate constant is 3.36 times 10 to the minus 5 inverse seconds uh, and the initial concentration is 0 0.0045 molar. What is the concentration after 35 minutes? So why don't you try that out? Okay, hopefully you've come to the same conclusion I have that the answer is C. Uh, and the tricky part here is that the time was given in minutes and the rate constant is given in seconds. So don't forget the units, don't forget the, the to, to uh, cancel them out or like whatever, change the units. So you underestimate the sneakiness. Uh, so second order integrated rate law, I'm not going to prove this. Uh, the rate uh, of that is the solution. So that the rate is there. And the solution is 1 over concentration of A is equal to KT plus 1 over the initial rate. And the reason for this is because when you have dx over x squared, this is the integral that is minus one over x. So if you, uh, that's that's the main thing there. Same thing with the the t, and then since it's a minus one over x, you lose the the negative sign. Okay, so solution is there for that. Uh, you don't have to know the calculus. You just have to know how to use it. Okay, and we I will provide you with all the equations. Next concept is half life. Uh, half life, the time it reached a half of something. So uh, this is used very extensively in nuclear decay. Uh, also, uh, I told you financing was uh, first order, and I'll tell you a little bit about that. So, well, uh, wait, well, let me go through the proof first. So, natural log, this is the first order integrated rate law. Ln of A over, uh, concentration of A is minus Kt plus Ln A0. So half-life, this is half the concentration, half the initial concentration, and uh, and then put in that, and we can solve. We get uh, ln of one half is minus kt the one half, and that means that the half life is natural log of two over k, or 0.693 over k. So solving for that, the half life is point is natural log of two over k, and uh, also uh, known if in the uh, in the finance industry is your doubling time. So, and they use something they call the law of 72. Uh, the reason why they use the law of 72, it's really the law of 69, but 69 is not a very useful number. It's 3 times 23. So, uh, 3 is useful, but uh, 23, is a, they're two, 23 is an uh, awkward prime number. Uh, law of 72, that's divisible by 2, by 3, by 4, by 6 is close enough to 5. So you can do calculations in your head real fast as far as doubling times. So for instance, uh, let's say I uh, invest $1,000 at 
uh, at 5% interest. So do the law of 72. Uh, so 70 divided by 5, that's 14, right? So it means it would take me 14 years to double my money on an investment of uh, at 5%. So uh, that's that's how they they uh, a lot of people do that. They can use the, that, and they train people to do calculations really fast in their head and start quoting numbers to people and that kind of thing. So if you ever wonder how uh, investment works, or if you talk to a real estate agent, they'll start giving you all these numbers. And uh, I remember one I had a student one time. He used to come to my office hours and try and sell me property because he was a real estate agent. And then I started asking, like, how are you doing these calculations? I mean, they make sense, but I'm just wondering how you do it. Like, oh, it's called the law of 72. And I'm like, oh, that's a natural log of 2. It's not 72. It's a natural log of 2. So anyways, so uh, and so there's the half-life. And like I said, it's used for nuclear decay. Or if you uh, go and you uh, do real estate, you can talk to people about selling properties. They'll train you uh, how to do these calculations in your head. But if you see here, so if you have uh, one molar or something, after one half life, you have a half a molar. After two half lives, you have a quarter molar. After three half lives, you have an eighth of a molar, and so on. Uh, so let's use this for uh, an example. Oh, and the half life for second order is one over uh, k to the initial concentration. You'll be given these equations. So milk iodine dissociates. Uh, with a first order rate constant of 0.271, what is the half-life of the reaction? So it's just straightforward. So the half-life is natural log of 2 over 0 0.271. And I think I'll just put this in the calculator while I'm talking to you. It shouldn't take too long. Natural log of 2 divided by 0.271. And how many sig figs? 3, 2 point. 2.56 seconds. Seconds to the minus one. So one over seconds. Uh, one over one over one of the seconds is seconds. So there's a half life is 2.56 seconds. So here is a summary for the integrated rate laws. Uh, so we have here the initial rate for zero order. We didn't even talk about zero orders. Uh, and the concentration of A versus time is a straight line, but we talked about it last chapter, or last chapter, last lesson. So for first order, uh, we have the, this rate law, the natural log of concentration of A at some time is minus KT plus natural log of initial concentration, and that means if we uh, have a natural log of A versus time, we get a straight line. The slope is minus the K rate constant, and then for second order, inverse A over our time T is equal to KT plus inverse of con initial concentration. And then we can get the slope there, the line, the slope is equal to the rate constant, and the y-intercept is one over the initial conditions. So uh, this is some way you could, uh, this is, these are other ways you could do by using a graphing method. You can figure out the rate constant, you can figure out the initial concentration because of the y-intercept. Uh, so it's an interesting thing. Yeah, you can get a lot of information from this. So uh, this is the second part of the chapter. Third part is coming up.